This February, Harvard University announced they had assembled a nearly complete genome of the little Bushmill. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's okay. A lot happened that month. TEDx auditions, the Super Bowl, the Winter Olympics. So if you miss this major announcement, it's understandable. But why is the genetic material of an animal you've probably never heard of important? It may sound insignificant, but it's really a step towards a future where de-extinction is possible. De-extinction is the process of bringing back extinct animals, either through cloning, genetic engineering, or selective breeding. Think Jurassic Park, where scientists took dinosaur DNA from mosquitoes preserved in amber and used it to clone dinosaurs. Now we all know that was just fiction, and that method doesn't actually work in real life, so dinosaurs won't be coming back anytime soon. But there are other species, like the little bushmo, which we may, may be able to bring back in the near future. I remember when I first learned about the concept of extinction. I was in fourth grade in Australia, and we were learning about the Tasmanian tiger, which went extinct due to hunting, human hunting and trapping. It was the first time I'd really learned about the concept, and I was horrified. I remember wishing that someone could come up with some way to bring the Tasmanian tiger back and other species like it. Little did I know that we actually were working on technology to do so, and now we're not so far from using it. But what I didn't stop to think about in fourth grade was whether or not it was a good idea. I mean, there's some good arguments for why we should pursue it. Some people believe we have a moral obligation to try to bring back the species that we made extinct. I mean, if we have the technology to try to reverse some of the damage we've done to our Earth, shouldn't we use it? Also, de-extinction technology isn't just used to bring back extinct animals. It can prevent endangered animals from becoming extinct in the first place. For example, some critically endangered species, they only have a few animals left, or they don't breed well in captivity. In those cases, cloning or genetic engineering is the only way to keep the species going. But when faced with exciting new technology, we often don't think through all the ethical implications. While we may have good intentions, the outcome may not be as positive. For example, genetic engineering or cloning involves playing around with the genetic structure of an animal. If we do this, we run the risk of creating a mutation which could have catastrophic outcomes, like a disease that wipes out entire species. Also, returning extinct animals back into the wild could result in the fragile ecosystem that has developed in the species' absent, ab absence being interfered with or destroyed. And then, if the reason that the um, species went extinct still remains, for example, their environment was destroyed, then they're just going to go extinct all over again. Now, I'm not a scientist, and I've only been researching this topic for about a month now, so I'm just scratching the surface in terms of results. There are so many pros and cons when it comes to de-extinction. But what I'm trying to do here is not to try to convince you one way or the other. What I'm showing you is that we really need to think through the ethics of new technology, because there are so many possible unintended outcomes. De-extinction is closer than ever. In 2003, a team of French and Spanish scientists attempted to clone the Pyrenean Ibex. The clone was born, and lived 10 minutes, dying due to health complications. Now, 10 minutes may not sound like a lot, but that was 15 years ago. Our technology since then has become much more advanced. And so we really need to start thinking about if we want to follow through with it. So what's the way forward? One way that universities such as MIT, Stanford, Stanford and Harvard are trying to answer this question is by giving new ethics courses in a wide range of scientific fields. According to an article by the New York Times, the goal is to teach the next generation of technologists and policymakers to consider the ramifications of innovations. Humans are naturally driven to innovate and push boundaries, and that's a good thing. But sometimes we're so caught up in whether we can do something and not whether it's the right thing to do. I would love to see a Tasmanian tiger brought back, but it may not be worth the risks. In 
the words of Dr. Ian Malcolm from Jurassic Park, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Let's be the ones to pause and not just think, can we, but should we? Thank you.